Hey everybody, it is Mary Hyatt and welcome to the Mary Hyatt Show. I am super excited for today's episode, episode number 57, with my very special guest, Sarah Jinks. I have been counting down the days for this interview because we talk about a subject that is one that I have been interested in for a very long time. One that I have done a lot of research on. I actually lead groups about this topic. But just to be a little bit forewarned, this is a topic that might be triggering. This might be a topic that you want to listen to in the privacy of your car or by yourself without little ears present because we are getting into the topic of sensuality and sexuality and sort of this dilemma that we face as women in our modern sort of culture of this pressure to be sexual, to be this ideal body in order to be sexual and really sort of redefine it in a way that I think will give you a lot of permission to define this for yourself that allows you to become fully alive. And so we dive into this topic of sensuality. So what does it look like to embody your entire being, to be connected to all of your five senses and to really embrace kind of the the seasons of your life. So Sarah, it talks about what it's like to be pregnant, what it's like after postpartum and how that affects her ability to um, fully connect in the act of sex, but how she's able to connect to her femininity, to her sensuality. And we kind of pull back some of the the wool over the eye, some of that brainwashing that we've experienced in our culture as to why we look at sexuality as bad or all the shame and the guilt that has surrounded it. Some of the messaging that we have received from little girls that don't really give us a full picture into the history of why we think the way we do around sexuality, around our bodies, around being sort of a a vessel of that sacred energy and how to begin to shift that, how to begin to connect back to your body, back to your own sensuality in a way that feels safe, in a way that is able to cultivate a lot of trust with yourself, with your body, with the intimate partner in your life, and be able to live more fully. So I cannot wait to introduce to you here in a minute, Sarah. But before I do, I want to make sure to remind you of my upcoming workshop that is happening November 10th. As you guys know and probably have heard on previous shows, this is happening in the heart of Nashville. It's an all-day workshop from 10 to 3. I'm super excited. We are almost sold out. So if you are interested in this workshop, please make sure to go to maryhyatt.com forward slash workshop because it will sell out. We only have 20 spots because this is going to be a really intimate day all about making peace with your body. And those of you who have followed me for a while, you know some of my journey and my process. And I kind of got to the point where there wasn't enough therapy, there wasn't enough coaching to allow me to get to the place where I felt authentic and alive and I was able to heal and reduce stress and reduce anxiety and reduce pain in my body without getting into my physical body. I really believe that our bodies are the missing link to our healing work, our self-awareness work, our self-development work. And so I want to invite you to join me in Nashville on November 10th for this workshop so that I can walk you through in a really gentle, supportive environment to connect back to your body, to feel your body sensations, to translate what they're saying, to learn your body's unique language, and to understand how your body traps and stores emotions, and to get a little bit more intelligent about that. So this day is going to be a really powerful day of breath work, gentle movement. It's going to be interactive. So we really practice getting in our bodies. And it'll also be lecture based as well. So we're going to kind of move in and out of actual body work and sort of taking notes and lecture style. It's going to be incredible. And lunch is included. I want to make sure that you know that right now, 
The price is $97, which is an amazing deal for these five hours plus your lunch included. So I hope that you will take one of these final spots and join us for the day. I can't wait to be with you and experience that with you. But without further ado, let me introduce to you Sarah Jinks. Sarah is the founder of Whole Woman, a monthly online membership for women seeking the answers to who am I and why I am here, and Live More, Way Less, the most popular online emotional eating program. You can see why I was so excited to have Sarah on as my guest. We are so aligned in so many ways. She really values the same things that I do and becoming our most authentic, just alive self. And between her online programs and as um, the, the leading lady on Hawthorne Farm, her 23 acre retreat center in Medfield, Massachusetts, Sarah holds sacred space to empower women and support them in finding their magic and rediscovering their most authentic selves. Since 2009, Sarah's community of women seeking a fuller, more meaningful life has grown to almost 100,000 members. She is a mom of three and has married to her husband, Jonathan, and they live in Massachusetts. And I know that you will love this conversation. I think it's gonna be one that you will remember for a really long time. And I hope that it invites you to explore your sensuality in a new way that feels empowering, that feels safe, and ultimately brings you more in contact with all that life has to offer you. So here is my interview with Sarah. Hey everyone, it is Mary Hyatt and welcome to the Mary Hyatt Show. I seriously could not be more ecstatic about my special guest today, Sarah Jinks. Hey girl. Hi, hi. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, oh, so, I'm so excited to be here. We're gonna I have, have truly been looking forward to this. We were talking a second ago in the pre-show about our mutual friend, Jada Selner, who is just also just an amazing, just full hearted woman who just lives from her soul. And she told me about you. I was on a retreat with her in Tulum, Mexico, kind of acting as the, the resident life coach for some of her clients. And we got to talking on the beach and we were talking about body image and we were in our bathing suits and we were feeling all goddess like and, you know, being in the water and, just all of the sort of sensuality that comes along with mm. feeling water on your body. And just, there was just a really loving space to accept and receive our bodies. And she just said, do you know about my friend Sarah Jinx? And I said, no, you know, who is it? Tell me about her. And I feel like whenever Jada tells you, you need to pay attention to somebody or connect with somebody, you should listen up. You listen. It's yeah. like soul sister, right? So absolutely. I was so excited and she was just telling me about what your message was and how you've been helping women really accept and love their bodies, no matter their size and their shape and sort of what you're up to now. And I'm just so excited that we get to do this interview because I think my audience is going to find a lot of themselves in your journey mm, and feel permission to sort of embrace their, their whole body and their whole being in a way that maybe they haven't considered before. So I want to jump straight into it because today we are talking about a topic that sometimes I think can stir up a little bit of um, excitement or insecurity mm -hmm. or shame or maybe some traumatic memories or embarrassment. It's kind of a loaded topic, the topic of sensuality. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's nobody better to talk about this than you. And I think I kind of want to just talk about first and foremost, sort of when we talk about sensuality, not sex, not the act of sex, but embodying sensuality, how would you sort of define that word sensuality? Like what does that word mean to you? So it's interesting. I, I usually define sensuality one way, but a different way of talking about it just came to me in the moment. So the way I think about sensuality is just enjoying being in a body mm. and enjoying being in our body and being embodied and what, and then really what it is, sensuality is just using your senses. Mm. And I think this topic is so important because 
what can happen? Sorry, I'm just going to jump right into it, Mary. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> like, That's okay. what we're here for. <laughs> um, this is what ha- this is what happens to women. We've been taught that the only purpose for our body is to look a certain way or to give a man pleasure, right? Yeah. We've been taught that's the only reason for our bodies. And so when we're hearing that message over and over and over again, what happens is that we're getting this brainwashing mm. that says that I'm literally just here to be like a mannequin. And that disconnects us from the millions of cool things our body does. Yeah. And it also disconnects us from our power because what happens is if we feel like we have to look a certain way in order to have the life we want, be a certain way, have permission to do certain things. And because that's a lie, we don't actually need to look a certain way. And most of us can't look the way that society is telling us we need to look in order to have the life we want. Then we are caught in the cycle of never actually becoming who we are. Mm -hmm. So my, my emotional eating program is called Live More, Way Less because I had spent my whole life trying to weigh less in order to live more. Yeah. And I realized it was the reverse that was true when I started working on my life, when I started understanding who I was, when I started becoming who I was, that's when I stopped overeating. And that's what led to me um, having the body that was right for me and having the health that was right for me, which I would love to talk about the difference between weight and health. Yeah. But sticking on the sensuality thing, I think it's so important to realize that the pressure to look a certain way is what disconnects us from our body, not actually gives us permission to be in our body. So when we can realize that we have a body and we practice being in our body, that's how we connect with our sensuality. I just love that imagery of sort of the embodiment of, of our lives, you know, embodying that mm-hmm. and the idea of the five senses, because I think what happens is it's, I sort of think of it like it's either black and white or it's full color 3D. Yes. yes. And so like sensuality means you're living life in 3D, full color. Like it's not even about necessarily the act of having sex. And I, I actually do want to get to that a little bit and talk about sort of the warped sort of pressure we have around that as women. But when we're looking at sensuality, it's like you said, the five senses, tasting, enjoying Mm -hmm. the pleasure of eating, which again, so many of us are afraid to do. Mm -hmm. Um, It is, I'm just looking outside at at my tree that it's changing colors and there's these beautiful leaves that are orange and red and just being able to really receive that and take that in for the pleasure of just beauty existing for beauty's sake, Mm -hmm. you know, or smelling, you know, I work a lot with essential oils and just the sensuality of, of aroma Mm -hmm. and, you know, all the different touch and all of those different elements of our five senses. Whereas most of us, and I think you're a mom of three, right? I am. So I think I don't have children, but I, I just, as a woman, I feel like I can relate to this concept of we go on lockdown. Like we just go on survival lockdown, which really, like you said, disconnects us from our body. So can you talk a little bit about that? Like that kind of survival instinct that we have as women and when everything feels really overwhelming and how that's easy for us to disconnect from our bodies and then how we can maybe recover from that survival mode? Absolutely. Because this just happened to me recently. Yeah. Um, I, I have a four month old baby. I went back to work a month ago and I work felt really overwhelming for me. And so my My mechanism was to, as you said, go into survival mode and just think about, I need to get as much work done as as I can. I just need to figure it out. I just need to finish this project. And I was so focused on work and I was spinning, I was spinning my wheels, you know, um, things were starting. My body felt tight. I had lots of anxiety. All sirens are going off. This isn't working. Yeah. So I did that because We live in a culture that teaches us that we're only meant to focus on one thing. Mm. And this is a very masculine, linear way of being. And the truth is, is that, you know, as women, we are connected to the earth and the elements. And I say elements, I mean earth, 
air, fire, and water. Um, we are connected to the cycles of the moon, which go through cycles that feel like the seasons, winter, spring, summer, fall. In the moon, it's the new moon, the waxing, the full, the waning. Um, and we have those same cycles in our menstrual cycle. So we know that from the intelligence of the earth and the moon and our menstrual cycle, that we are meant to change and that we are meant to be all things. And so when I look at that, I realize, oh, I have many parts. I have my work, I have my relationships, I have my body, and I have like my soul fire, my spiritual work. Mm -hmm. And if one thing is feeling off, it's because the other things aren't being nourished, right? So this is like one way to explain the importance of balance in women, mm. you know? And I think it's really important for us to understand that each thing is only as strong as the other. So when I say that, like my work is only as strong as my relationships with my kids and my husband. Mm. My body is only as healthy as my connection to spirit, mm. you know, um, yeah. my mother, I'm only as good as a, of a mom as I am in integrity in my work. Yeah. So what I had to do in that moment was, okay, if work's feeling hard, I actually need to look at the other parts of my life. I need to look at my body. I need to look at my spiritual practice and I need to look at, um, my, my relationships, my marriage and my relationship with my kids being my personal primary relationships. And so what I did was I realized, okay, I'm not moving my body. I called my sister who's a personal trainer and she got me on a plan. You know, I looked at my spiritual practice. I wasn't doing the practices that really work for me. So I recommitted to doing those every day. I looked at my relationship with my kids and I said, where do I need to, is, do, is there any work to be done here? And I realized not really, which is great. I just needed to maybe be a little bit more present with them. Mm -hmm. So when I brought in those other three things, all of a sudden without changing anything with work, work felt better. Mm -hmm. And I had more clarity to make different decisions. I was able to see how I could be, maybe be a little bit more authentic with where I was at because I was in a, in a postpartum period right now. Yeah. Um, and give myself permission to change. That's another thing that we don't do as women. Yeah. So, and also, you know, as part of the, the body work, not only was it around moving my body, but it was thinking about, okay, I'm not moisturizing my skin right now. You know, and that's a really great practice to sort of get us into our body. That's all sensuality is. It's just basically being like, oh, I have a body. This is where I live. And so sometimes we have to put our hands on our body and moisturize our skin. You know, I love um, putting oil in my hair and braiding it. I love taking baths, you know? So sometimes when we're feeling so outside of our body, it's almost like our energy needs to turn and take care of our body. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Totally. As we're two separate things because most of the time we feel like we're outside of our body. I mean, I can't even tell you, I had years where I was just like a walking head. Oh, I didn't yeah. want to look at it. I didn't want to talk to it. And now I call it she, you know, my body is a she and I love her and I take care of her and we're a team. I love that. And I do the same thing. I like my body is my own. It has its own kind of essence and yeah. energy that has its own way of communicating with me and its own dialogue and mm -hmm. the relationship, you know, it's a relationship. It's a back and forth relationship. And, um, I, I love this idea of sort of slowing down to nourish mm -hmm. ourselves and like how sensual that is. And it's interesting as you're talking, I'm, I'm feeling these red flags come up, these old, old stories, yeah. old messages that are like coming in and saying, well, that's a luxury. You know, uh -huh. like that's one of like an old limiting belief. Like it's a luxury to taste your food or to have a bath or, you know, to, to have the time to even, you know, adorn your body in some way or, or to massage your body or touch your body. And then the other part of me is saying this old tape of shame and guilt mm -hmm. around the body. Mm -hmm. And I think that I kind of want to focus on that a little bit because I think those messages from like, for me, it was all the, the conservative kind of Christianity that I grew up in, um, which I know I mentioned to you a huge part of, of my listeners, my audience are, are from a Christian background and still practicing that faith. And, um, there's sort of a, a message within the church that any kind of 
focus back on ourselves, any kind of feeling the sensations of our bodies that's threatening, that idea of pleasure, that idea of desire, that mm -hmm. idea of experiencing, uh, uh, you know, the, the senses is, is threatening. And yeah. so how do you walk people through that when they have that sort of objection of like, no, sex is, you know, sensuality is only going to lead to me wanting to cheat on my husband yeah. or kind of having those sorts of fears where it just feels really scary and threatening. How do you, how do you bridge that for people? Yes. So this is a really big topic. And I love when you said, um, limiting beliefs, because that is, a term that is, is used a lot in personal yeah. development. And I, I think it's actually really empowering to realize that the limiting beliefs is actually brainwashing that we've gotten from an outside source. Yeah. And I think when we can see it, that it's like not our fault mm. and we can put that those like belief systems on something else, we can then feel our own true belief systems come through. Does that make sense? I love that. Yeah, yeah. Super, super helpful. It's, it's very permission granting, yeah. you know, like, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So here's, here's what I think is important to, to understand. And this is from, this is from my belief system. So I just want to say that this is, um, everyone can come to whatever understanding they need to, but I really feel like there's a difference between, um, Christianity and Jesus and the church that some of us are in today. Yeah. So the way I like to think about it is, and we can see this in a really beautiful way. I'll just use Mary Magdalene as an example. Yeah. So um, Mary Magdalene was for years considered a whore. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really important for all of us to understand that in the year 1200, all of the art of Mary Magdalene and the Virgin Mary was burned. And all of the artists were forced to recreate new images of the Virgin Mary and of Mary Magdalene, mm -hmm. the Virgin Mary being painted in blue in a very pious virginal way mm -hmm. and Mary Magdalene being painted as a whore. Mm -hmm. Now we know from the Gnostic gospels and when we look at the original books of the Bible that Mary Magdalene was one of Jesus's most honored apostles. Mm -hmm. And what's great is that the Pope has now apologized for a thousand years of giving Mary Magdalene a bad rep. And, and he has said, you, you know, yes, Mary Magdalene is now being considered a saint and an apostle and a prophet. Wow. So that was big yeah. that he did that really, really big because around, you know, we, around the year 1200, 1400, um, what happened was, who was it? I cannot remember his name right now. Um, I have it written down in my book, which is not with me. I'm not great with historical names. But anyways, what happened was, is there was this whole movement to control the masses. Mm. And this movement of controlling the masses meant that women needed to be told that their sensuality was dangerous and wrong because as, as we know from being sensual women, when we are connected with our bodies, when we're connected with our sensuality, that reminds us of our power mm -hmm. and people can't tell us what to do when we are fully in our power. Yeah. Right. So it's easier to control us when we are being told that that power that we know is there, that we feel brewing in our bodies is wrong and bad. And so we shut it down and we just say, I'm not even going to pay attention to what's going on from here because it's wrong. And then when we feel like our essence is wrong, we zoop and follow the rules, right? Yeah. So, and then this, basically this continued through the burning times in Europe when between the years 1400 and 1600, 9 million women were brutally tortured, burned at the stake and hung. Wow. Nine million. Wow. So this is when a lot of these belief systems started was in order to control. This was from my lensing and from the research that I've done, not Jesus's intention. 
right? Um, so I think it's really important for us to all do our own research on that and to sort of understand where did this belief system come from? Because from all the research I've done in the history that I've read, it's to, it, it's to control us. And so what I think is really important is to have some time when we're going into our own bodies and really asking ourselves, is this part of me actually dangerous? Mm. You know, is this part, can I love and accept this part of me and see it as my power and my ability to love everybody more, you know, if we're in a committed relationship, how is this about loving my partner more? How is this about loving my kids more? How is this about me becoming more alive and expanding my capacity to really be of service? Because it's our energy source when we connect with our body. It's how we're built. And it just, I mean, childbirth is a really great example, you know, where like we're such a portal of, of life and it's using all of those, you know, all those organs that we need, like our uterus is our power center. And so it's, um, it's just one way to see that like our primal human nature is so powerful and um, worth honoring. I love that. And I'm so grateful that you went into some of that history because like you said, we, we aren't taught that. And so we're not taught the history. We are not taught the history of patriarchal society. Right. And so we're, yeah. we're kind of a byproduct of the brainwashing yep. and really, you know, we're, we're housing all of the guilt as women, all the shame that we're dirty, that we're slutty, that we're a whore, mm -hmm. you know, all those derogatory, you know, claims, um, that get thrown on to women. You know, I was taught from early age that I was responsible for a man's purity. Mm -hmm. So I had to watch what I dressed, you know, what I wore, what I, what I was, you know, putting on my body because I didn't want to, I wasn't supposed to make a man stumble. Like right. it was my responsibility to guard a man from sinning. And so what's interesting is I think then fast forward and you get married. I got married, um, when I was 20 years old. And so you kind of have this, okay, you're supposed to play by the rules and be, you know, a pure virgin and all of these things, which there's a lot of wisdom in that too, as far as, you know, your connection with other people. You don't want to obviously just be giving that. I mean, I think sex is the most sacred thing. Totally. Like there's so much. Do. Absolutely. There's so much wisdom in that. And so I don't mm -hmm. want to just say like, I want to reject that piece of it, but the way it was presented and then you kind of get into a marriage. You were never allowed to talk about sex. You couldn't talk about sensuality and yet you kind of show up and you're supposed to be an expert at it and know what to do and know how your body works. Like I had never looked at my own vagina. I had never really, I didn't even I have four sisters. We never changed in front of each other at all. So just even being naked felt very foreign and very scary for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then all of a sudden we're supposed to love sex and, and give our husband sex whenever they're in the mood because it's dictated by their desire, not our own. And so it's like, um, I mean, you're like, oh my God, <laughs> like, well, it's how much does it navigate? Well, exactly. I think that the, the thing that I think is so important for us to remember is that the fact that we have these belief systems is deliberate. Like we were deliberately brainwashed into being controllable and brainwashed into feeling crazy. Cause if we feel crazy all the time and, and like we're wrong and broken, we're never going to rise up and say, actually, can we do things a little bit differently here? It makes us just stay small and stay quiet and stay nice and be the peacekeeper and always be accepted and all that stuff. And I think we're coming, we're coming to a time, I mean, like we can feel it, we can see it on the news. We're coming to a time when like we're being called to question the status quo and the things that we're taught. And I think it's, that's why I love, and that's just like a really small piece of the history, you know, that I talked about today. Um, and very specific to women who are of Western European descent because man, oh man, there's so much in all, all other lineages. Yeah. Um, but the more that we understand the history, the more we can see clearly on the paper, oh, it wasn't always like that. Mm. That this is, this is a new thing because before this happened, you know, there was, um, there was just more 
there was more of the divine feminine that was merged with the divine masculine. And when we're brought up in, in the Christian faith as it is now, all we have is a male God and a virgin and a whore. Like how can we have no role models for what it looks like to be an empowered woman? Yeah. And I think that's why, you know, for me, when I've learned more about feminine deities of other faiths, it's helped me see like, oh, like I can embody the energy of Kali. I can embody the energy of the great mother. I can embody the energy of the high priestess, you know, and that is so fun to, to play with. And we can also, we can, if we look, we can find those archetypes um, in the Bible. We just have to, I find that when I read the Gnostic gospels, which is like the original books of the Bible, I, they're, they're spelled out more clearly for me. And it, um, I can feel it resonating in my system more. Well, and it's just really beautiful to think that no matter what your faith is, for people who are still very active in the church or people who have decided to, to leave that faith, mm-hmm. that there is a space for a woman to embrace her femininity, to embrace mm-hmm. all that she is as a woman, as who God you know, if we want to use that language, who God created her to be yeah, and her fullness, like you mentioned earlier, and I talk a lot about this, like to live fully alive. And to mm-hmm. me, to live fully alive means we're like, we're online, you know, we're, we're, we're tuned in, we're aligned with our bodies, with our soul, mm-hmm. with spirit yeah, and we're connected. You know, we have that ability, I think as women to be so much more connected to the seasons and to the earth. And Mm -hmm. like you said, to all the elements, like that is what makes us uniquely woman is that ability to be so connected, so intuitive, so empathetic, so like attuned to what's going on. It's like, I know my, my, one of my friends who has five kids, she talks about as her spidey sense, you know, she she just like knows things, you know, and, you know, she, she know if her kid is like screaming like 10 blocks away, you know, she is a mother. She just has this motherly instinct, which is so beautiful. And I think when we begin to sort of shut off and compartmentalize parts of who we are as a full woman, mm-hmm. it's sort of like Renee Brown talks about this when she talks about emotions and vulnerability, like you cannot numb the dark without it also numbing the light. Exactly. And so it's sort of like what happens is when we cut off this huge chunk of who we were created to be, our sensuality, our sexuality, Mm -hmm. it dims the light of all the other areas. I mean, don't you think that's true? I mean, haven't you seen that? It's so true. It's so true. And I think a really, um, I want to give, I want to give all the listeners some practices to do to illustrate this Perfect. because I think this is really important. So I remember when my sensuality was, when I was finally allowing it to come out, I did question like, am I going to cheat on my fiance? You know, am I going to want to just go like make out with like all these hot guys that I'm now seeing? Cause I was just like, I turned on and I could see for the yeah. first time. And so what I had to realize was I had to find practices that was about expressing my sensuality for me. And so things like that, it was just about me being naked in my room by myself, actually getting a silk robe. Um, My friend Rachel Rosito has taught me this beautiful morning ritual, which is just like getting up in the morning and making tea, putting on a silk robe and um, lighting some incense in a candle and just dancing for five minutes. Mm. Like that is a great way to just get the vibes going and turn on our sensuality and turn on that pleasure source that's just for us. So I had to find these outlets and teach myself that sensuality wasn't just about connecting with another person in a sexual way. Um, So it's doing things like that. It's just going for walks in the woods and not having your phone and just looking at everything and feeling the sun on your face. Or it's like if you can ever find an opportunity to go skinny dipping, there's like no greater outlet, you know, because it's, we, our bodies just want to express. And so we have to find different ways to express, mm. um, being in a body. Cause our body all of a sudden is like, you know, imagine you were locked in a room and you weren't allowed to eat for four days, right? You're going to come out and eat everything. 
you know, that's how our bodies feel Yeah. when we're sort of like opening the door. And so we have to give our bodies all of the different ways mm-hmm. of connecting to our senses. Well, um, learning, so I think go crazy. learning to how to be in control of that, like you're in the driver's seat, you know, it's, I just think about like, what things do you enjoy that feel safe? Right. Where you can really like trust yourself. I mean, for me, I think when you're exploring this and I remember when I sort of come, came awake to this, I was, I was six or seven years into my marriage and since divorce and people who watch me know, know this journey, know the story of my life. But at the time it was like, I had been asleep for so long, kind of what you're describing. And then I sort of little by little was starting to come alive and, and wake up. And so it felt really scary. I mean, it felt very threatening. Like, what am I going to do? Am I just going to go nuts? You know? Yeah. And it was like finding those things that, like you said, were just for me that mm-hmm. nobody needed to know about, that nobody needed to experience with me. That was about mm-hmm. my pleasure, my experience of being fully alive. Yes. Um, there's this scene in the movie Amelie. And she's oh, talking okay. about this and she talks about like sticking her fingers into the, the vat of like beans or like llama, be- lima beans or something. And she was just yeah. talking about the pleasure of like the things that were bringing her pleasure and like just some random little thing like that. Just the feeling of the cold uh, legumes on her fingers. Mm-hmm. And I just remember watching that movie, which is inadvertently, I think a very sensual movie with the colors and the, the French, you know, all totally. of that, you know, being in Paris. And, and I was just like, ah, oh, it's about like smelling the bread. It's about, you know, having flowers. I love flowers, having f- fresh flowers in my home, lighting a candle, doing yes. things that just made me feel like I was alive and not sort of this vision of, okay, sexuality only means porn and, you know, really, um, just extreme kind of examples of sexuality that I felt like, well, that's not, that isn't authentic for me. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily want to be in that space. And I don't think that's the only way that a woman can be sexual and can be connected to her body. Cause like you said at the very beginning, I will never be that. Right. Ever. Like I, for most of my adult life, I was living in a very plus size body. And so it's just like, for me, I couldn't even relate to that. So how can me in the body that I'm living in today feel like my body is my home and I love to experience it? Yeah. Um, I'm curious for you, like when you started this journey for yourself, and you're doing these practices, at what point did that kind of flow over into your sexual life with your husband? Like, did it enhance that? Did it make it better? Like, how did that shift just even the way that you related to your partner sort of as a byproduct maybe? Yeah. So I think, um, you know, it's interesting because me and Jonathan's sex life has been so in and out uh, because of having babies all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so what happens with me is that usually when I'm pregnant, I want to have sex all the time because I have so much estrogen in my body. And when I'm postpartum, I don't, which makes perfect sense. And I think this is a really important thing to understand. And it still like blows my mind that we are not taught this. But, you know, when we're pregnant, we have 30 times the amount of estrogen in our body. Mm. And then within four days of having a baby, it plummets to menopausal levels and stays there for the duration of nursing. Okay. So our, our, we just do not have the hormones that turn us on to want to have sex. We do not have them in our system. Yeah. But we are not told that we're just told that at six weeks, our vagina is like not ripped open anymore. So of course we can have sex. Right. (laughs) Um, and everything's fine. We should just go back to normal, but our hormones do not support that. And that's on purpose. So we don't get pregnant because we just had a baby. But I think it's, um, it's just, it's not taught to us in health class. It's not part of the culture and it's not taught to doctors in medical school. And I know because I'm married to one, you know? And so I think it's so important again for women to educate ourselves on our biology, um, all the time, but especially when we're pregnant because we're, you know, 
birthing another human. It's nice to know what's going on. And um, I really love the book Fourth Trimester by Kimberly Ann Johnson mm -hmm. is a really great book for women to read. But so, you know, I'm four months postpartum. My body is not feeling very sexual right now. However, I'm feeling like a very sensual, feminine person. And so what ends up happening with me and Jonathan is like, I'm just, I'm just juicy around him. And yeah. so it helps us just, we connect on a romantic level, even though we're not having sex right now. Yeah. And it's nice so we can still, it's not, you know, so it's like, it's things like the way we look at each other when we see each other for the first time, you know, when he gets home from work, cause he leaves before I wake up in the morning mm -hmm. or just the way that we um, take care of each other when we're around each other or when I'm cooking, when I'm cooking dinner or when he's cooking dinner, or how we come together after the kids go to sleep. So mm -hmm. it's really in all of those little moments. And when, um, when we are having sex, it does spill over into just having a sweetness mm -hmm. and more of a connection, you know, because for me, like I'm at a season in my life where I want every time I have sex to feel like a spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. Like I want this to be like, this is a sacred coming together of two people. Mm -hmm. And we're here with the intention to be love incarnate and to express this beautiful energy of love in our marriage so that we can radiate it out to the world or at least fill our house with it, you know? So, and I was noticing, you know, because I still live in America. So I feel all of this brainwashing still. I am so not immune to it. Yeah. And after I just had my third child, I realized, oh, I'm feeling that pressure to have sex. And with that pressure comes the pressure of me to look a certain way. And so I was going into that spiral of like, maybe I need to start doing crunches every morning and maybe I need to start like losing weight or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Sarah, <laughs> hello. Um, and I realized that on some level, sex was still about what we looked like, mm -hmm. even though so much of our relationship is about our spiritual connection. Um, and how we're soulmates. We talk about that a lot. And so I knew that I needed to like up it in our, you know, in our regular day to day. Well, first up it in me and yeah. take care of that in myself and then have it spill over into the way I'm relating to Jonathan. And then it can spill over into our sex life. So I sort of like, I had to amp it up and it, it all went along with when I was talking earlier about how work was getting so crazy. Mm. That was all part of that cyclical process. I love just kind of hearing just what that looks like. And thank you for just your vulnerability and being so oh, yeah. honest with your journey, because I think that helps because I think you're so right. I mean, there's so much pressure to have sex, mm -hmm. with certain frequency, and then, gosh, if only my body looked like this, it would be better, or he would enjoy it more, or all these, you know, judgments that we cast on ourselves that take us so far away from our body. I mean, I've, I don't know if you've ever had this experience where you're having sex and you're like, I bet he's just thinking about my stomach right now. Oh, my yeah. My stomach looks so gross. I'm so embarrassed. I can't let him know that I'm thinking about my stomach, you know, or else he's going to get, you know, really turned off. Yeah, it's like, oh, well, now I'm not into it enough. But do you yeah. see how we that just makes us go like this? Totally. That's just on shrink. Pur that's on purpose. Yeah. So it's an act of revolution to be like, no, that's a lie. And I am not here to have my stomach look great. Yeah. You know, I'm here because I am a sacred vessel. I am an embodiment of love. And that just, that was what's going through my head is just brainwashing that I well, know what you're listening to. And just giving yourself like, I am allowed to enjoy this. I have permission at this size to love this. Mm -hmm. You know, I am able to receive the love from my partner that clearly he's showing me in this moment, like just being able to be receptive of that. Like he clearly is into this, <laughs> you know, yeah. like yeah. this is great. It feels good. I mean, all those kinds of things, just, just, relaxing our body too. Just even like the, the physicality of it, just relaxing. Yes, exactly. I mean, that just to me, and I just think that goes hand in hand with our sensuality. 
It's just relaxing, just slowing down to be present, to like turn off the, the monkey mind, Mm -hmm. the brainwashing mind and just be like, what is happening now? What am I experiencing? What am I feeling? What am I seeing? What am Mm -hmm. I enjoying? What am I loving? And being willing to just be with yourself in that experience yes, as it comes up. Absolutely. Mm. Okay. It. Well, I want to shift and I want to hear about what you were doing because you are kind of in the process. You mentioned that you were in sort of this hyper season of launching mm-hmm. um, and working. And so as we were talking beforehand, you were telling me a little bit about your membership program. And I want you to share that with my, my ladies because I feel like it's going to be such a perfect fit for them. And I want to make sure that they know what you're up to and how they can get connected with, with your project. Great. Thank you so much. So I have this amazing membership called Whole Woman. And it's a place to come to really discover who you are and why you're here. So it's about getting out of those patterns of, of all the brainwashing and the being controlled into have, finding like our own core power. And I think the, the most beautiful part about Whole Woman is that, you know, we have hundreds of women in the membership. And so it's like a new normal, a new community, a new sort of thought bubble to unbrainwash ourselves, to be with women who are saying, you have permission to do that. I allow yourself to do that. Yes, you do you. You do you. Um, One of the things we say in Whole Woman a lot is your life is yours. You're allowed to want what you want. And um, you're allowed to create the life that you desire. And so it's a place where um, I talk about different lessons or strategies every new moon. So we follow a moon cycle, which is so fun. And the moon cycle is 29 days, so it's pretty close to a month. Um, and we use the, the wisdom of the seasons and the wisdom of the moon to sort of follow. So in November, we have a new moon on November 7th, and we're starting to talk about rest and the importance of rest because we can see outside in the Northern Hemisphere like the last leaves are falling off the trees, like we're getting ready for winter, we're coming into this transition. Mm -hmm. And winter is a time for rest. Um, What's also great about the membership is that you can sort of start at the beginning because the whole thing kind of brings you through a process of releasing and weeding things out. And then have, and then we do a lot of visioning, thinking about what do we want to create in our life? And what is the strategy and the work we need to do to actually have that creation happen. Um, and it's super affordable. And I would just, I would just love for you women to join us because it would be, um, it's just a juicy, loving group of people. And we're talking about really cool stuff. I love that. And I mean, I hear over and over and over again from people who write me after the shows and connect with me that one of the things that they desire most out of life on this journey is just the community, like that sense of belonging, Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. sense that I'm not alone because when you're kind of going up against the brainwashing and you're kind of going up against these things that you've thought were true, you realize, Oh my gosh, no, it can feel really isolating or you feel crazy, Mm -hmm. even though you know, in your soul, like, no, this is real. This is authentic. This is true. Just to have other women who are embarking on the same work and her doing it alongside Mm -hmm. of you to me is pure gold. Like it's that, pure gold. That is like the secret sauce. If there's anything that I could say, like, okay, how do you truly become your most authentic self and live fully alive? It's like get a band of women together who are journeying with you because when women come together, I mean, transformation happens. I mean, it is powerful. Quickly. Quickly. Powerful. Oh, I'm so excited. So if you are interested in this and you want more information, about Sarah's membership, you can go to maryhyatt.com forward slash whole woman. And we will link to that in the show notes. We will have that. If you're watching the YouTube, that will be below this video. If you are listening to the podcast, that will be in the description of the podcast episode, but Mary Hyatt. 
com forward slash whole woman. And you can see all the details. You can see how it's broken down. You can see the cost and decide if this is like the next loving step for you to continue this deep soul work that I know we're already all doing. So let's just do it together. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, well, Sarah, this has been just a true treat and pleasure Thank you to have you on the show. And thank you, like I said, for being so vulnerable and willing to go into some, you know, kind of tricky, potentially triggering topics. And I think this is one that, like I said, you're just the perfect person to talk about this with. So any last words, any, any words of encouragement as people are sort of looking into the sensuality and kind of exploring that maybe for the first time? Yeah, I would just say, um, go slow and start with just a rest, start with taking a nap. You know, sometimes the most sensual thing we can do is just take a nap, you know, and allow our body to rest. Cause oftentimes if we've been going, 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 that's what our body needs first mm. is to, is to rest. Mm, I love that. So gentle. Like it's just yeah. so, so kind. Yes. Exactly. I love that. Well guys, you can follow Sarah on Sarah jinx.com. You can also follow her on Facebook and on Instagram. She is just a fun person to stay connected with and always posting super valuable content and just real life stuff, which is so refreshing, I think on social media. So make sure to follow her on Facebook and on Instagram. We'll have the links below so you can click that easily. But Sarah, thank you so much. And I'm just excited for your program. Thank you, Mary, so much. Thank you, thank you. All right, bye, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.